We all have Christmas traditions. Perhaps it's baking Christmas cookies, hanging Christmas lights, pumpkin spice latte, or decorating a Christmas tree. I have some very fond memories of my father uh, starting up the skidoo and taking me deep into the bush in our property to find that perfect Christmas tree. And most years we found something satisfactory, but there was one year when we found this spectacular 30, 40 foot coniferous. I thought, yep, that's our Christmas tree for this year. My problem is we didn't have a chainsaw with us. We had this flimsy little hatchet. So by the time we finally brought the tree down, cut off the crowning seven feet, dragged it home, placed it in our living room beside our fireplace, it actually ended up looking like that proverbial Charlie Brown Christmas tree. The Christmas tree in its roots and in its tradition really, really has nothing to do with the birth of Christ. As far back as the 17th century, Germans had taken this pagan symbol of fertility and transformed it into a symbol of, of the Christian faith and of new birth. Legend has it that Martin Luther was so taken by this starlit fir that he cut one down, took it into his home at Christmas time, placed small candles on it, and used it as a symbol of new birth and of creation. In 1841, Prince Albert of Germany gave a gift to his wife, Queen Victoria of England. He gave her the gift of a Christmas tree. And that launched a whole new wave, a whole new tradition for the Christmas tree at Christmas time. Usually at the top of a Christmas tree, we place a star. Of course, that's a symbol of the star of Bethlehem that led the Magi to the Christ child. But it's also a symbol of something far more. It's a symbol of light dispelling darkness. The prophet Isaiah employed this imagery when he spoke of the situation that Israel found itself in. And in Isaiah chapter nine, we read these sobering words. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. You've enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest and as men rejoice when dividing the plunder. And then just a couple of verses later, he says this, for to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given and the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end and he'll reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord God Almighty will accomplish this. Israel was overwhelmed with fear, with anxiety, with hopelessness, and with despair. Really not that dissimilar to how so many people feel today in society. But into this dark condition, light emerged and joy was rekindled. You see, as humans, we need God. We need a wonderful counselor because our trite answers just don't measure up. We need an almighty God because in our brokenness and in our limitations and in our finiteness, we're not able to solve the problems of our world or the problems in our own lives. We need an everlasting father, a loving parent to guide our way and we need a Prince of Peace. When we're surrounded by conflict and division, we need rest. And we all long for righteousness and justice. Indeed, this is good news. This is Christmas. Jesus was born, Jesus lived, and Jesus died on our behalf for our sins. And through that sacrifice, God has paved the way for us to enter into a restored relationship with God as we place our faith in him. Indeed, that is good news. That is the gospel. That is Christmas. And so on behalf of all of us here at Briarcrest, students, staff, all of our families, we wanna wish you and your family a safe and Merry Christmas.